Hi, and welcome back to McMaster Start Coding series of online learning lessons. In this lesson, lesson eight, we'll be learning about state diagrams and adventure games. My name is Gabrielle, and I'll be one of the mentors helping you along the way. So to begin our lesson, we're gonna start with a little game, which involves you interacting a bit and maybe speaking out loud as you play along and get more comfortable with the setup of our state diagram. So we're gonna look at the screen for a little guidance on how to interpret on what you should do based on my hand gestures, which I'll also say and describe out loud. So if we were to begin in the quiet setting and I was to raise two arms up, what sound would you guys start to make? Quack, 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 you're right, yes. So you received a cue to quack using my two hands and you're going to stay in that state of quacking until I give you the next transition or cue to determine your next state, your next sound basically. So now what if I put one arm up after the quacking state? What sound would you make? Oink, you're right, that's correct. So we're gonna keep the oinking going. Oink, oink, oink. And now what happens if I were to put one arm up? Moo, 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 you're right. We'd start making mooing sounds. And if I would put two arms up again, we'd be back in our oinking state. And two arms again, and we're back in our quacking state. Perfect, so thank you for all playing along. And I hope you got a feel of how we move in between different states. So if I want to go from quiet to moo, it wouldn't be a direct state uh, transition. I would have to do two arms to get to quack, an arm to get to oink, one arm to get to moo. And then you're able to see the relationships between different states and the transitions required to achieve those. So what we just did was a live action game using a state diagram. What this means is that we started out in a state where everyone was quiet, uh, explains where you are or what status you may have, and then you moved or you transitioned into the quack state based off of the two-arm cue I gave. This cue is depicted by the arrow on the diagram. The arrow or transition work to illustrate an action that is to happen in order to go on to the linked state. And you guys caught on pretty quickly and naturally to use a state diagram as a legend to help you interpret which states are linked and how you can maneuver in between them. So state diagrams are used in almost every single adventure game, both virtually and in person, in order to help you map out and understand the storyline. So another way to think of state diagrams or an application of it can be seen in an adventure game like Pokemon, where we have our main character, Ash, and for him to get to various different states or placements, such as maybe Pallet Town or Pewter City to visit his friend Brock, or even visiting Professor Oak's lab, he has to go through various transitions in order to get to them. So to get to Pallet Town, he may have to battle or go through a transition of battling Team Rocket to get there. Or to get to Professor Oak's lab, he might have to walk, compared to taking a hot air balloon, which is a different transition in order to get to Pewter City to see Brock. All these different states and transitions have a meaning and understanding in order to get there. So there's a logic in between these different states. Other examples of this can be seen through games like um, Animal Crossing, or even simple things like Simon Says. So how do we do this in code? So we're gonna open another tab in our Google Chrome, and we're gonna type in macoutreach.rocks, and we're gonna do the slash that's found on the question mark key, and you're gonna type in paldraw. So paldraw is kinda of gonna be like our, um, our stepping stone for making our game. It's kinda of like how we use um, a shape creator to learn how to make basic shapes uh, within Elm and then after that we're able to get onto the pat understand the pattern and do it ourselves. So to begin we're all going to sign in as careful donkey. It's a great username and don't forget to make sure that your letters are, are um, using the appropriate case so uppercase for C, uppercase D and lowercase for the other ones and then you're going to click state diagram for a standalone app and you're going to log in. So as you can see, a lot of us use this username. We're gonna create our own game. So come up with a name that you're gonna remember um, and that's individually gonna be yours. So for this example, we'll probably call it lesson eight demo. So we know this is ours. And we're gonna press the blue button, create. And it's gonna get to this new screen. So this new screen is gonna be how we're gonna, where we're gonna be putting our game into. So to start, um, do you want to maybe think about what kind of game you want to make? An adventure game? Yeah? Okay. So when we start the game, what kind of states or places do we want to have within it? 
do we want we want to have do we want to just start right into the game or do we want to have like maybe a welcome page a welcome page okay good job i like that girly so yeah we're gonna make a welcome page so to do that we're gonna press the green rectangle on the side here on the right hand side that says plus state and it's gonna pop up into the middle of your screen and once you click on it you're able to change the name so we're gonna call this one welcome and when you press the blue button to save it'll change the name so from the welcome screen what are other places we want within our game do we want to have our character start um, in a cabin maybe yes. yes okay cool thanks <laughs> so and we're gonna do the same thing again we're gonna change the name to cabin save and from our cabin what other locations do we want to have maybe let's think of three forest cool thank you cool so we're adding it like that um do we want to have a mountain? mountain thank you oh also yeah make sure you click on your buttons before you name them so this one would be mountain and from our mountain what else do we want to have maybe one more a river river okay or how about let's think of what's another location maybe the river can be how we get to an island, an island. yeah but river is also a good one but i don't know if it'll fit into story so island okay so now that we have all of our states we don't really have a way to get to each of them so this is where we need transitions so if we started our welcome page um, how do we want to get, is there any place we want to go to in particular first? And how do we want to get there? Maybe, do we want to have like a quick start, like a, a prompt? Yeah, I was thinking a quick start to the cabin. Okay, cool. So to do that, we're going to add a transition, which is found just below your state button. And it's going to pop up on your screen and you're able to move all of them around. And if it, you notice it gets too congested, you could always zoom out using the red button. So welcome, and then we're gonna call this click start. Cool. And now we wanna link them. So we have our states and we have our transitions. They're not connected at the moment. So we would, the system wouldn't sense that they're linked. So we click on our welcome bubble, our state, and you see there's an arrow at the top left part, click on that. And now that will be like, tell you that you start at welcome, but where would you go next? You wanna click start, that's your intermediate. And then from your click start, you want to press the same thing of the arrow at the top and go to your cabin. Okay, now that we have that sorted out, where do we want, do we want our cabin to be able to access all three of these points? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. So from our cabin, how do we want to, no, let's add a transition. How do we want to get to our forest from our cabin? Maybe we can, just call this walk. Okay, I'll take that as yes. <laughs> okay, cool. And then, so we'll do the same thing we did before where your cabin is able to walk and then go to your forest. But once you're in the forest, you're kind of stuck and that's no fun in a game. So do we wanna make their, so we have to have the system give them options to come back to the cabin so the game can keep going on. So we have to add another transition. What do we wanna call our transition from the forest to the cabin? Walk back. Yeah, it's a good name. Yeah, we wanna try and make these descriptive so then we know where we're going or it gives the player a heads up of what are the options. And then we link it back to the cabin. We'll do the similar thing for the cabin to the mountain and then the cabin to the island. So what's the transition we can do for cabin to mountain? Hike. Hike, yeah, that's a good one. Hike, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll keep zooming out. And then what are we thinking for? Hike back, yeah. Does that sound like a good one for back down the mountain? Yeah. Hike. Hike. 
and then finally the island. So this goes back to like maybe Gurleen's example of saying river. So maybe we could, from the cabin to the island, we could swim. And then we'll do, we'll keep it simple like the other ones and do swim back as a word, as a message. So what we've done here is make a really simple um, state diagram that kind of explains from the welcome screen, you're able to click start and go to the cabin. And from the cabin, you can go to three different places and I'll go back to the cabin afterwards, but none of them overlap. So from the island, you can't go to the mountain or back. You have to go through the cabin. It kind of gives you the logic of the game and like a roadmap for how it would be set up. It's similar to how we did over here in the game, in our action game, that you have to go through various states and their transitions in order to achieve it. So you can go from quack to oink, but you can't go from quack to moo. You have to go through that system of oink to get to the moo and then get back to quack. So it kind of gives you your game logic. This is a little redundant, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions. And once you're done your game, you're gonna save it and then you're able to download it. So, lesson eight demo, it's here saved and we're gonna press generate Elm game. And it should pop up on your desktop or wherever we wanna save it. And it'll be on a plain text file and you're able to copy and paste that, work, that file into our Mac outreach um, uh, video game, uh, game slot. And the other half of the lesson, Tavian's gonna go over how you, well, what does that code generated mean? And then how you can interpret it to make it yourself. And then also how can you add different elements to make it more appealing visually? So how can you add maybe the shapes that you made in the first or second lesson um, to make your forest more picturesque? Or how can you add, change the various um, fonts of the letters so that people know like, oh, this is like, I don't know, you wanna give like a more, a, a more descriptive font for your work, but yeah. So that's the first half. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Okay, so I've just pasted in the code that came from PalDraw. So looking at it, like right off the bat, we can see that this isn't what we're used to. So let's start off with the top. So as you can see in my shapes model, firstly, there's no um, boiler right after um, the equal sign. It just starts with case model dot state. And essentially case model dot state is a way of writing a list. Um, moreover, it says welcome, cabin, forest, mountain, island. So in PalDraw, that's what we use as a different state. And each state has its own boiler. So essentially what this does is it separates each state so that each state has looks different and you can customize each, uh, each state to look a certain way. Um, when we scroll down, we see that there's a type message and here it says all of the different transition we've made. This is really important. We cannot, um, there, the transitions won't work and neither will the states unless this um, type message is there. Um, moreover, there is the type state this just uh, lists all the different states that we have. And then afterwards, we have the update message model. Now, essentially, this is what connects the, uh, the transitions and the different states together. So for example, we have click start and right underneath it, it says case model.state. And from here, we can deduce that uh, once we're at the welcome state, uh, once click start is initiated, so the transition is initiated, it would go to cabin. And that's essentially what all of the different um, update message models say. So for example, this one right here on line 54 says if we're at cabin, if walk is enabled, then we would end up at forest. So I'm just gonna compile this really quickly. And as you can see, we end up at um, the welcome page, however, because there's no button or anything 
really that uh, connects the two. Because right now we haven't, uh, we don't have anything that enables the walk transition. So there's no way, or the click start transition, sorry. So there's no way to get to the cabin. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make buttons really quickly. So I'm gonna make a rounded rectangle. And I'm gonna make this 50 by 20 by five. And I'm gonna build light blue. And I'm gonna move this down. And now here's how we can enable the this is how we can enable the um, transition, the click start transition. So we'll make a button. So before I make the button, I'm first just gonna compile it to see what um, it looks like. So there is what we're gonna be using as our button. So now we're just gonna write, gonna make another input underneath rounded rec and we're gonna write notify task. So once we do that, we're gonna write the transition, so click parts. And then once we get here, we can click this button and you get to the cabin. So I'm also really quickly gonna go back and I'm gonna write a go to cabin or a message here. So I'm just gonna write Also, another um, different fun thing that you can add is if you don't like the font, you can write custom. Oh, custom font. And then in brackets, you can write a few different types of fonts. So one of the fonts that we found works is Comic Sans. And now we're just gonna build. So yeah. Um, I could also add the button onto the text so that regardless of where I click on this blue rectangle, whether it be the text or the blue part, it would enable the transition. So now we have the cabin. Uh oh, shoot. Um, so now go moving on to the cabin. Um, we wanted to have three different buttons to end up either at the island, the forest, and what else was there? The island, the forest, and the mountain. Let's just really quickly add in three different rounded rectangles to work as our buttons.
So another thing that you can do if it does get a bit tedious if you want to go from well, if you want to work on the cabin slide where but like it keeps compiling back to the welcome slide so you can actually go down to the bottom and change your initial state to be cabin rather than welcome so once you do that when you click compile it would always start at cabin um make sure to always change your initial state back to what you want it to be rather than what makes it convenient at the time. So I'm going to make this button. I'm going to write um, swim on it and I'm going to make it so that it it essentially works towards the island. So it's going to be the swim. So notify app and I'm going to write swim. Also going to write Text and I'm going to write swim. So now we're at the island. So I'm going to compile it and I'm going to, for time's sake, I'm just going to copy this code. And this transition is going to be walk. So that means it's going to take us to um, the forest. So notify walk, notify tap, walk. And I'm going to make the last button. And since the last one was mountain and it was hike. So now we have all the different buttons to get to all the different states. So now we have island, but we want to get back from island to cabin. So once again, I'm just going to paste a button. And this button is going to say back. And I'm going to use the transition um, swim back. It goes back to cabin. So I'm just going to really quickly do that for all of the different um, states that we have. So we did it for islands. So let's do it for forest and mountain. And remember that even if you are copying and pasting, uh, make sure to change the notify tap, the transition because otherwise it will not work.
So now we have all of our buttons enabled. Um, yeah, so let's say we wanna go to our island. And in the island, I want there to be um, like a yellow sun at the top. So again, all of these different states allow you to uh, make, to essentially play around. And it's essentially like a small little My Shapes model for each of the different states. So you could just write circle and we'll make it 20, build yellow. And I'm gonna move this up. So now we have like a little sun there. So that's essentially how you can make a little adventure game and you can use buttons to move around and go to different states and places within your game.